Hey guys, Nick with 2, how do you do? Uh, this video is going to be a little different than what I normally do. I usually show off some of my knives that I make and uh, some projects that I make, but this video is more of, I don't know, my ideas and my uh, hopes for the, the future. Um, today is the 6th of June, or July, sorry, 2012, and uh, if you haven't heard of the virus in Colorado, um, really big destruction and uh, homes lost, and um, it's quite a sad uh, right now, but that's what I kind of want to talk about is housing and what we can do to change housing uh, for the future. Um, I don't know where you live. Uh, but in America, at least, most of the homes you see are going to be rectangular. With, if you don't know what a rectangle is, it's a four-sided figure, um, like this. So four, four walls and a roof, usually an angled roof like this, and that's it. And that type of housing has, is covering the earth. It's in Europe. Asia, Africa, um, in most Western countries, that's the type of housing we have. And that's what I think needs to change um, in the future, in, in the coming years. And uh, to do that, we need to work with the environment. So, I want to call it like adaptive housing where or yeah where your housing is determined by the environment you live in uh, we know of all these natural disasters that happen and uh, even though these natural disa natural disasters happen in all these places we still have the same housing all over the planet so you I'm looking at some pictures of, of the Colorado fires here and uh, I see the, the fires coming over the mountains and these houses, these big houses, are just on the side of the, the mountain, just waiting to be burned. Because most houses in America are made of wood and uh, plywood, drywall, which are all flammable uh, uh, construction materials. And so we, in the zones where we know that these disasters can happen, and will happen, um, despite our... Um, fire prevention technology, the, the super absorbent gels that we have nowadays, we can adapt our housings to fit that environment and prevent future loss. The startup costs and, and the, the building phases may be higher, but they will be circumvented by the fact that they will never be needed uh, to be replaced. Uh, because with fires, if the house goes up, it's gone. And uh, I got some uh, talking points here. Uh, just some natural forces, real quick notes. Fires I've talked about. Tornadoes, uh, America's really uh, the tornado belt, the tornado alley. That place gets hit hard by tornadoes. Hurricanes, you know, Florida, Gulf Coast. Um, floods, you know, the Mississippi flooded um, floods all the time but we have dams and stuff now so not much of a problem now and uh, a big thing is temperature I'll, I'll get into that later um, and we need to change our housing change our building techniques um, to fit these various natural disasters environmental hazards so just a real quick drawings I know I'm not the best expert of drawing but you know, we have these big rectangular houses like this that sit up on top of the ground and are vulnerable to uh, fires, floods, everything else. So uh, for this uh, tornado hurricanes, uh, 
natural disaster type stuff. You know, for the tornadoes, we have the Great Plains. Uh, the water table's quite deep in that uh, area, those areas. Um, as opposed to like in Texas where you can't have a basement because it'll flood all the time. But where you can build underground uh, in the tornado prone uh, areas, you should. Um, you can have this uh, uh, entrance, kind of like, looks like a bunker entrance, um, made out of uh, cinder blocks, and uh, have that domed, that's another house idea, but underground you can have a very large uh, rectangular house and not have these huge abrupt flat edges for the wind to just take and destroy the house with. So you may have this, but if that uh, breaks and crumbles, you know, if you're living on the ground, definitely have two exits. So have an exit over here, or at least two exits, and maybe a third exit with a little tunnel going over there. But having a, a tornado uh, or homes in the tornado alley underground, it would save millions of dollars in damages uh, and uh, other environmental impact. Another, if you don't want your house on the ground, change the shape of the house. So we got this big rectangle that for, uh, wind forces and uh, can grab onto and the roof usually have gutter and a little hang off right here on, on both sides and if wind gets up in there it just takes the entire roof off. I'm sure if you, if you haven't seen videos of it just google or youtube it and you'll see just tornadoes ripping the, the roofs off the houses. Um, these domed houses, things that don't have sharp angles or roofs to be ripped off, um, you know, the wind come over here and just blow over it. I'm not an engineer by any means, but look at a golf ball. If a golf ball wasn't dimpled and, and round and uh, as it is, the wind wouldn't travel over it the same as if it was just smooth or it was bumpy on the outside, or square, you know. They designed a golf ball because of the, the air resistance. So if you design a house in the same way, you're going to take out the possibility of the destruction of, of uh, wind damage. And these, these underground houses, uh, also uh, going back to my talking points, if you had these houses in Colorado, in the, in the mountains, um, Definitely, you could go underground because you're on the side of a hill. It may be expensive at first, yes, but having to pay more to get a house underground than to have to rebuild it every time a fire happens, you know, weigh the cost and benefit. Um, yeah, so if a, a fire, you have a fire, this thing is made out of cinder blocks. Fire is not going to hurt it that bad. Unless you get like trees falling on it and everything, that's why you have second tertiary uh, exits. Um, all those houses would be fine, and if a fire was com was to come through, all you'd have to do is evacuate the people, get the people out, and let let the fire go through. And uh, after that, just go back in, clean up some some brush, some ash, and go back to to your life instead of having to rebuild your entire house, your home, your, your livelihood. Um, and uh, the Ponderosa Pines, the China, this is a little tangent, but um, I'm, I understand that those Ponderosa Pines and the, and the Rockies over in that region need uh, heat, need fire to germinate. And uh, without allowing for natural burns and, and fires that would, would destroy houses, all this uh, underbrush and uh, undergrowth dies, decays, but it stays there, builds up, and when a fire does eventually happen, it get all that underbrush that was, that was uh, prevented uh, by humans to burn, now is a lot of fuel for those fires to get up into the canopy and move all over the place. Let me check the time real quick. Alright, well, this, uh, part uh, of the video is going to stop real quick. It's going to end in about five seconds, so I'll just start a new video and uh, be back with you in a couple seconds. 
Okay, um, so I was talking about the, the ponderosa pines and uh, how those, how we have prevented lots of uh, natural forest fires uh, to help that have gone through the, the forests. And we've created kind of a, uh, a fuel for the big, huge fires that get up into the canopy, destroy everything, rather than a low brush fire that, that goes through the trees and not doesn't destroy them all. That's a whole different thing, but if you have these houses underground or stuff that's very fire uh, proof, we could let these fires happen naturally because of lightning, other um, fire stuff that happens, uh, mostly lightning, but we could let those fires go through, have the houses be fine, but have the Upon the rest of pine be able to germinate other things that naturally happened before humans came here. Um, so that's the fire bit. Um, let me check talking points. Alright, floods. Well, let me, before I do that, I'll, I'll talk about temperature. Um, it seems to me, I'm, I like hot weather. I'm not a big winter guy, and, uh, I don't like temperatures below like 75, but a lot of Americans like their houses freezing cold, like 60 degrees in the summer, and I don't like that. But with these houses, because it is underground, um, you're gonna have insulation in the winter, and insulation at, well, from the heat in the winter or summer, sorry. So these are gonna be at a more constant temperature for more of the year. Um, which means we're gonna, you're gonna have to use less energy heating and cooling your home. You're gonna be able to, um, on, on all of these houses, that the amount of energy we use just to cool the air, um, is enormous. So if you can cut those, those heating and cooling energy consumption by, how many houses there are in Colorado or whatever. That's a lot of energy we can save. So, uh, you know those, the caves. Those, uh, caves stay at a constant temperature of 70, 68 to 78, something like that. Um, quite cool and uh, reasonable for most humans. Uh, so if you have something underground, uh, it's gonna be like a cave, so it'll be insulated from the heat, and with the the fact that co let cool air, more dense air, sinks, you're gonna have cooler air in this house rather than a house above the ground. So you're saving all kinds of energy. Plus, if you're if you have like uh, 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 a rain catch, you can just use gravity to uh, have a shower and uh, you can put like a water collective collection bucket up there for, for the rain and then just use gravity as a shower. You may have to have a pump to pump it out or uh, into the pipeline but that's another uh, thing to think about. Um, lighting, um, you can have skylights that at least cover the first floor if you have a, a one floor house underground uh, skylights and uh, otherwise you'd have to use your electricity to run the lights um, yeah so that's the temperature part um, floods and water stuff um, I haven't really thought about this um, don't have many ideas about floods and stuff but you guys know about Hurricane Katrina and other hurricanes that totally flooded houses and destroyed them. And uh, so where people live, where it's possible that, to have floods and hurricanes that would flood their, their neighborhoods, um, you might need to have houses that are able to float, are able to, you know, move around. Uh, but still be tethered in the same place um, in case of a flood 
in case of uh, uh, you know a flood. And uh, so if you have something that floats, um, I don't know however many feet the the flood is going to be, your house is going to be fine. There's not going to be water damage in, in in the house, and you won't have to tear it down and build a new one. So you're going to save costs in the end. I don't, I'm not the greatest expert on this, but just a, a thought. And then uh, earthquakes. Uh, California. Uh, I saw I saw a uh, video about the Japanese after the earthquake that uh, destroyed many homes and set off the nuclear. Um, crisis at the plant that they had uh, kind of like what I was talking about they have this uh, air compression system in the house that forces air underneath the house and gives it a cushion of air for the house to move on or to ride on while the earthquake is happening so that the, the earthquake forces will not transfer to the house and uh, that's something we can have in California earthquake prone areas where you can still have this same type of housing but just change the foundation to save the house and uh, uh, prevent damage um, that's that's really uh, the, the thoughts I've had uh, on this uh, problem um, it seems like we've been using this kind of housing for centuries and uh, I think it's time for a redesign uh, or adaptation to our environment um, to save energy, to save costs, to save people's lives um, just some things to think about um, the fires, yeah. Just looking at all these pictures, it's really sad. Um, that's about it. Um, please uh, let me know what you think. I know this was a long video, uh, but you know, pass this along. Give me, give me your thoughts. Um, is this something you want to happen? I know this is something I want to happen uh, because it's just so sad to. That every time you see a disaster, or or something, some natural event occurs, and all these people are misplaced, houses destroyed, lives gone, and we can change it simply by changing our view of architecture, and uh, not by anything radical, uh, crazy angles or anything, just simple design that works and is uh, effective at preventing uh, natural forces from destroying your house in the area you live in. We all, we all live in different areas of the, of the country, of the world, and uh, we all have the same houses. I don't think that uh, should be the case. If you live somewhere where fires happen, you should have a house where that could stand up to a potential fire. If you have a house that is near a flood prone area we have records of floods in that area build a house that can survive a flood just simple ingenuity can save a lot of houses save a lot of lives um, save a lot of energy it's just uh, we need to start changing our mindset of what is a house what is a, a home that we can live in because uh, you know the American dream house white picket fence but what does that house look like that's that's my question so uh, yeah please uh, leave your uh, comments below and remember keep your knife sharp your mind sharper I'm Nick Wu too thanks for watching